So today we're going to go over a settle game because he's my favorite player still, and when I see interesting games from him, it pretty much just immediately bumps anything else I had planned to do so I could go over the game. Uh, hopefully, you guys will enjoy it as well. Uh, it's a recent game. Some of you may have already seen this. And those of you who attend my lectures regularly will know that nothing unusual is in the beginning of the game. Why? Because I never go over it. That's why. It's a very standard opening. We've got 4-4 four, four, and 3-4 three, uh, three, points all around. Black's got options, can approach, can enclose. He decides to enclose for orthodox. Now, something slightly unusual is that white responds by actually taking uh, the Chinese for himself. Okay. That right there is a little bit different than we normally see. I mean, usually we see the split, or not the split, the approach. And if you are very old school, we might see the split. Though that's not as good as it can be, I think, the general uh, idea is here. We don't usually see B very often. And the simple reason for that is if we actually play a move like that, then our opponent can potentially get in a pretty good framework still, and we usually don't want that to happen. So here we see uh, Chinese. Interesting choice. It leaves black the opportunity to, of course, to play on the right-hand side and get the extension that he wants for his enclosure. But if he does that, it's going to be Gote. Um, for black, I'm going to say... Uh, I think O17 is inferior to Q10. That might just be my style, but I definitely like the uh, extension. All right. Pros are always trying out new things. I'll have to see about uh, looking at that game then. But yeah, it's probably more of a style thing. Also, um, O17 doesn't completely surprise me, because both A and B have been done uh, to death. We pretty much know the variations that are going to arise out of those. So O17 and still leaving that split in there as a possibility that's kind of cool. Alright, so we could take the right hand side as I mentioned. We could play O17 as we first set it. Um, NFO set it as well as someone else whose name I don't see anymore. Oh, yeah. And VU set it. But that would be Gote. Either of those moves are Gote. And we probably don't want to give our opponent free reign to go ahead and continue expanding on uh, his framework. So, white, black sides to approach. White responds. No reason not to. He has C9 there. He can make uh, territory. Good development. Threatens corner, white responds, and black simply gets a bit, a bit, a little bit of a base for himself. White's move. White can do many things. Like I mentioned, the right hand side is still open, but he does still have the uh, Chinese variation on the board. So I guess maybe expanding on the bottom might be possible too, but. When trying to figure out which of these moves we really want to play, uh, we have to ask ourselves a couple of things. Uh, how good is this point? How can we determine... You can probably hear the helicopter flying overhead, sorry about that. How can we determine uh, which move is better? And for that, we know that Black wants to play on the right-hand side, because it links up all of his stones into a nice, happy little framework. But Black does not want to play on the bottom because, one, this stone is already low, hard to expand from it, and it doesn't actually uh, link up our stones as we previously mentioned, 
and get that happy little extension from our enclosure. So right now, bottom is not as interesting as the right. So of course, we are not going to play there. He decides to play on the right-hand side, because that's where all the interesting things are happening. And now we have a choice from black. From black. We can, of course, pincer, can not pincer, and just take our territory. A would be very... Hmm, what's the word to use this? A would be very risky, almost. If we pincer, we're saying that we're fine giving up our corner. Which means potentially white will have three of them. So we need a great deal on the side or in the center to compensate for the corners that we're giving up. So you can probably play it, but you have to be aware of that. It's like, I need to profit in this way or that way. Otherwise, the exchange probably wasn't uh, in my best interest. Also, uh, let's actually go back and... This is interesting, so let's actually go back and do this. Let's say... Let's say we just pincer tightly. And we give up our corner. We know that we can't really develop this way very well. Because of the low stone. Building up a framework off a third line stone just doesn't work. It's too easily reduced. I mean, not even by a shoulder. You can play something like this, for example. And both threaten to... Uh, invade, which probably is going to get ignored, but also threatening to expand at the same time. And those kind of dual purpose moves are really a uh, bit of a pain to see on the board, so we don't usually like giving them to our opponent. And expanding your framework around uh, a third line stone like we're seeing here, it's a really good way to actually give them those dual purpose moves. So you've got to be careful about that. So the white comes in. Now we could again uh, block the 3-3. Three, three. White will settle. But black decides to do something a little bit more interesting instead. He decides to actually attach. What is his attachment for? We see it sometimes. Maybe we use it in our games. Why do we play it? Alright, we got one person saying it's for territory. Does everyone agree with him? Or does nobody agree with them? Alright, so far I actually like, uh... I don't know how to pronounce your name, and I really, really apologize for this. Uh, Vu and, uh, Moboy. I do like... Your, uh... Answers the best out of what I'm seeing so far. Because it's very, it's very, very straightforward. that we can play this because we're interested in actually developing territory on the right-hand side. I also like um, Josek's follow-up to that. If we want uh, influence, then we pincer. And then we go through this variation. So this is very uh, important to realize when you're trying to determine which of these two you actually like to play. Assuming that you don't want to respond to the 3-3, three, uh, three, three, and you want to sing a little bit more aggressive. Like, are you interested in territory, or are you interested in influence? And as we can see, influence here probably wouldn't be very good, because we've got the ladder going to lower right. White would get a great ladder breaker that just can't be ignored. Works well with his influence, or with his framework, rather. And white would again get sente to reduce, which we can see can easily be done with uh, a move like k15. This area can still be invaded. White's picking up some territory. I would like this position better for white. Uh, you could just block at that, but that is uh, staying confined to the top, allowing your opponent to get... Uh, that great base of his. If we don't want to stay confined to the top, we can play here as a way of saying, you know, maybe black should have pulled back here to ensure that we're never going to be able to 
uh, get that extension from our enclosure. But he didn't. He went for the corner. So Black is going to uh, try and develop the right-hand side. And we see very, very normal Jiseki here, so I'm just going to go through it briefly. All very standard. Though White does play here, the follow-up, this is the exchange. He's getting the 3-3 three, three in because Black didn't get to play it. Black gets to develop the right-hand side, as we're seeing here. Pick up some territory for himself. Pretty nice. But usually, the Jiseki calls for the follow-up of Q17 immediately. What Black decides not to play that. He decides it's going to be a little bit too slow. So, let's say you're in Black's position, and you say that this is too slow to respond to. Where would you play instead? You've decided that it's too slow to play locally. So how do we, how do we continue? Are we going to do something else? If so, where and what? All right, a bunch of people are liking G3. Okay. We've got generally the same idea. Uh, we've got G3, we've got extension to the star point. One aggressive player says, forget White's framework, I'm tackling it head on. Okay, okay. But consensus is, seems to revolve around D, uh, G3. And you're almost right. He decides to play H3 as opposed to G3. I'm going to assume because he didn't want to get involved into this particular Jiseki. Where if we actually struggle across, uh, against this stone, we're giving lots to white as well as potential to black. But that's a lot of solid territory we're giving up to white. So the question then becomes, can we still develop without giving all of this territory away? And Black says, yes, we can. We can simply play a little bit further away. And we might have, uh, might have forced enclosure, but that is by no means all the territory we were seeing earlier, and this can still be invaded. Uh, anything else is not as severe against our stone. Uh, playing high a mistake. Ah, high. That is a very good question. The trouble with high is a couple of things. One, if white approaches, you kind of feel compelled to respond immediately in such a way that is not going to allow this forcing move to remain on the board. You don't want that uh, obvious threat to connect underneath. Um, also, if for any reason you need a base here, obviously you're kind of not going to be able to get one because you're kind of open on one side. High, high is a bit more risky here. Anyway, we see white uh, actually go ahead and approach. If black doesn't respond, this can get pincered in the area that we're worried about. We'll simply disappear. That's always good. Oh, sorry. Uh, B gets much territory that way as well. No, by playing high? Maybe, but you are leaving Aji behind. I mean, you are saying, well, if I actually invade this, I can... Oh, with G3. Um... A bit more specific, G3 for white or for black? For black? Yeah, you are getting uh, a lot as well, but, yeah, this variation. You are getting a lot of potential is here as well, but you're giving a lot of solid territory for white. It's open for both players, because this might look really, really large to you, but we know that we still have, like, peeps here, we still have shoulder hits, and attachments here. This Something in here will live. I will not be at all surprised if he can squeak out a, gr uh, a live group here. 
This isn't territory yet. So he's looking to develop without making white too solid. So he plays this way, pretty simple. White hasn't developed too much just yet. And we're getting uh, development on the right hand side. L4 to submissive. For white? Like right now? That'd be aggressive as heck. Oh, for black and st ah. Yeah, this says I'm not looking to develop up. I'm looking to simply cash in on what I have. This is looking to simply get territory and not continue to develop, which isn't as frightening, because this we can count, and this is a lot easier to count. We can figure out how many points um, Black is getting from here. So we know about where he stands. If Black plays this way, we're not entirely certain where he stands just yet. We don't want him to get like a kind of finish like this on the board because we know without even counting that's entirely too much while at the same time if he decides to approach at c5 he's one move away from connection so this is a lot more multi-purpose so black jumps out white has a decision does he actually defend the marked area on the left hand side to pick up points. Does he drop everything, go screaming into the right hand side and try and rip all of that away from black? Bit of a tough decision, bit of a tough decision. He plays a more calm choice of enclosing. And I give him credit for that. I would be freaking out. Because I don't like large areas like this. They tend to frighten me. I played large areas like this way too many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is slowly ranking up there with Sanrin, say. I'm starting to hate this game if I was white. But that's because I'm stupid and I can't count. If we aren't stupid, and if we actually can count, one, congratulations, I have to learn that. And two, we realize this left-hand side is still pretty friggin' huge. Plus, we even have an attack up here for later on in the game. So although it looks large, how is black possibly going to enclose this with one more move? It seems kind of difficult, right? Enclosing from here to here and just one extra stone? Probably not going to happen. So with that in mind, why not take territory? If I sound like I'm on helium, it's because your internet connection is messing with you. Your bandwidth uh, to KGS is a bit on the low side, so you're kind of dropping data or something. No, 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 no. I am not in any way using a voice changer during my lectures. I have thought about it so very hard. and. Like, will they say anything? Will they just assume it's their computer? Will they think KGS is lagging? Oh, one of these days I'll so do that. But alright. Black's move. We've already established that it's really, really difficult to uh, take that bottom right as profit with one more move. So he goes back and uh, completes the Jiseki in the upper right hand corner. Because we know that white's going to respond to this. How do we know that? Good question. Oh, sorry, did someone ask something? Um, my bad, my bad, not ignoring you, honest. Doesn't D6 make F3 feel weird? Um, no. No, 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 it doesn't. Because this group, that not even, yeah, this little group here, it's kind of against this little strong area of whites now, right? So white can start thinking, you know, maybe I can actually flat out pincer this group. It can't get a base. It can't, like, threaten to turn and invade me. The only thing that it can do is try and counterattack or go up. So these two stones have to be uh, a little bit careful. 
and brainless move time, if we play a move like k3, we can also threaten to link up under. So we have a forcing move in this uh, area of blacks. But all right, black went back and answered uh, the Shiseki finally. Pretty straightforward game so far. Nothing happening that's at all hard to uh, follow with. I mean, we're just having people mostly developing here. How they're doing it is a little bit... Uh, I don't even really want to say out of the ordinary. Maybe a little bit unusual for what most of us are used to seeing. Unfortunately, you're right. There is no poor weak group for Lee Settle to completely just kill off with impunity. However, this area on the bottom is still very, very large. If White's not careful and does something a little bit too overzealous, he might actually still have one. So White defends the corner, because if we play anywhere else, we have to figure, well, there's this later on, and that's kind of horrible. There's this later on, and now are we actually alive in the corner? Like, what about that cut point? That's little bit of a problem there. Here, we're alive. There's nothing black can do to us. It's all good. <laughs> Giving away corners can be okay. I have a very, very nice lecture where a professional gave away all of his corners to an amateur hide-on. It went fairly well with him. Black peeps at cut points because <laughs> black peeps at cut points because why not? He can develop a little bit on the top. He knows that he's almost never, ever, 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 ever going to be able to cut this directly. I mean, we usually don't like peeping at cut points, but when we know we just flat out are never going to be able to because our stones on the top just get utterly destroyed when we try then, yeah, okay, this isn't in our best interest. We might as well at least get some influence out of this. So white probably does not do that, and I just ruined the tree. Oh my god, sorry. White actually plays out, because connecting would be really, really weird. That would be heavy, and we wouldn't like it very much. So instead, he's going to use this group to begin trying to reduce. But that cut point still exists. Lee Sedol probably is a little bit happier now. So he cuts, yeah. His threat to cut was not in any way uh, small. But this is a really, really huge cut. I mean, look at all this. I mean, this entire framework right now is sort of just staring at those center stones, trying to figure out how they're going to live. How can we actually pressure them to make the most amount of territory while he's just running around trying not to get killed? He didn't want to connect because it's slow and heavy. He wanted to do something more proactive than simply connect, for example, and then maybe allow black to jump out or play another move in Sente. He wanted instead, I think, to get shape here by threatening to do a deeper invasion. Oh god, stop mocking me, a shift. There we go. So now we have to figure out, was this a good idea or not? How weak is this group in the middle? If it's too weak and black gets a lot in the middle, then connecting was clearly probably the better decision. But Black is not going to screw around with his shape. He knows that if he gets too greedy, and an example of too greedy would be to jump in without any shape. Because then you're going to get peeped to death, and you're going to deserve to die. I mean, there's a peep here, there's peeps here. We can just develop the bottom if we want. We can just start to develop the, or the top if we want, the bottom if we want. We can develop anywhere we want. Because this stupid group can't do anything but try not to die. So 
So he's a fan of shape. Yeah, it'd be ridiculously heavy. Black connects because he knows what's going on. The corner, if we connect, we can still try and kill it. So white says, no, I don't want to die in my corner, thank you. I invested a lot of stones here. I kind of like it. I'm rather partial to it. So I'm going to live here. And they did some forcing moves for black. Got to save a stone. Got to eliminate any potential clamping uh, on the top to reduce. You know, just some very nice moves to have. But the question that I'm posing to you all is you are now black. You have this group in the center that is blatantly trying to mock all of your influence. How do we actually attack it? What do we do here? Because we've got to attack this somehow. We can't just do nothing. Gotta do so Oh, sorry, Nazumi. I saw that too quickly, didn't I? You want to play elsewhere when I just said you couldn't. But you know what? Maybe playing elsewhere isn't a bad idea. Oh, shh. No, 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 no. Don't tell me I'm doing this. Okay, thank God. I thought for a minute there I was getting an uh, echo on my recording. Alright, Frozen Soul votes kill things, like I said. He's aggressive. Um, try to get more influence than attack? Okay. Um, yes, I have been talking to you. I'll mention that about you. I'll mention that later at the end. Let's see what else we have here. Um, right, kill things. Make H3 stronger. Yeah, we can, that's a pretty good idea. Pearl bit 011. That's getting to be more interesting. A little bit too close, though, but you're on the right track. P7 is just saying, forget the group, let's just make 7th line territory, which sounds reasonable, but come on, man, we can kill things. Alright. Oh, did we hear it? Oh, we almost heard it. So very close, so very close. He actually plays N9. Yeah. Because this is starting to do lots of cool things. I mean, with N9, we can begin poking. Mm -hmm. We can also threaten to connect under and take 8th line or maybe ninth line territory down there, depending on how well White wants to respond to this. White responds by saying there's absolutely no way I'm being locked out of here. So I will surround you if you don't respond to me. White says, yeah, if you surround my group and force me into life, that I'm never, ever, ever going to be able to attack you ever again. So I'll connect up. Threaten to again surround. Forces black to connect. So white gets stronger. Pretty good moves. And then launches a counterattack on the offending stone. The one that's trying to go after all of our shape. However, now that we are under attack here, we have obvious choices. We can press on with our attack, or we can defend. Black decides to try to press on the attack. Took those shape points. That was his original plan. White says, I don't care about your original plan. If you try and cut me, I'm going to surround you. That's not good for Black, so he gets out. And then White follows up with what I think is actually a really, really good move. White is thin. There is a tremendous amount of Aji here. But he made the, he just made this game so much more complicated. 
Because this game is no longer about, you know, is my group in the middle going to be okay? What's, what's happening to those three stones? By cutting off H3, black has two weak groups to look after. And white has one, maybe two, if he's cut off. So suddenly, most of the board is under attack. I mean, the, a really, really large portion. Everything in here is unsettled. And now we have to figure out how we're going to handle all of this. Black's move. Black probes. White responds nice and strong. There's no Anji there. Black threatens to cut through. That'd be that'd be pretty large. White says can't cut through me. Black gets to strengthen and threaten to cut through the other way. And white says no, you really, really aren't cutting through there either. Okay, okay. But as Joseph just mentioned, uh, if you have weaknesses, create more weaknesses. That's kind of what he just did. Because now there's a, a really, really nice forcing move here for black. Do we know where it is? Hint, bottom side of the board. Where's the forcing move? I don't want to go into the probe right now, I'm sorry. I mean, depending on how white responded, if he responded with a honey in the corner, for example, then there's the option to cross-cut, so it's going to get complicated there later. Um, L5, yes, Frozen Soul setting. As well as Blank Flash. Yeah, our group on the bottom wanted a base, right? I mean, it kind of needs it in order to not die, so it's one of those things that we typically like getting. White, on the same time, doesn't want to get cut through because then his stones are killed and then black gets like 6 line territory, or well, 5th and 6th. So we want to protect that as well. And because white wants to protect that, suddenly half of this fight just resolved itself. This is settling very, very nicely. And this is actually a warning to everyone here on the dangers of this shape. A lot of people do try and like fix their cutting points with that uh, this happy Kasumi. They're, they play this intentionally. But when you do, you have to make certain that you're aware that it is leaving that cutting point, those uh, peeps behind. And those can be rather uh, large in a game. Conversely, you shouldn't be afraid to take advantage of them for yourself as well. Now white has to not get out. White has to connect. White can't just get out. White is forced to connect because he's no longer making an exchange. He was offering, okay, you can cut through me here, and I'm going to attack your two stones on the bottom. But that's no longer up for, that's no longer on the table. Those stones are settled. So we have to make certain that the option to be cut here has been removed. So he connects first. White is so far away from needing eyes right now. Because that group in the middle is never going to be able to surround both the bottom as well as that top portion of this group at the same time. While fixing all of the shape points that white can take advantage of. Like, you know, here's a forcing move. Um... We might even be able to just make an eye on the bottom. We can still jump out, so we need to be surrounded before we, like, poke those away. So black is simply not strong enough in order to attack this, which is a hint for the next move. If you are not strong enough for the, to uh, do what you want, how, how can you get stronger? Is there a way to get stronger? Do we just jump out of our group and, like, get stronger that way? How do we handle this? Forcing moves, okay. Do we have any on the board? We need like forcing moves in the middle, right? So where are we gonna get forcing moves? Don't you dare say it, Frozen Soul. Mm. 
I'm cutting somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we could try. Oh, sorry, that's not available to be cut anymore. Sorry. Got a lot of K16s. What is K16? Why do you all like it so much? Oh, um, it's Black's turn. I'm sorry. I don't know if you are aware of that. I'm sorry. I was a move backwards. Um, so, knowing it's Black's move, do you still want to do K16? I'm a little confused. Alright, I didn't think so. So, knowing it's Black's move, where do you want to play? I have faith you can get it, Nozumi. You were so close. You were so close. I don't think it's been said yet, has it? Uh, no, it hasn't. You were right. I mean, you could... Your basic idea, you thought it was White's move. How is White going to get stronger? He was going to shoulder hit a third line stone. But it's not. It's Black's turn. So how can Black get stronger? Well, he can shoulder hit a third line stone. So you were so close to getting it, you two. You had the right idea, you just needed to uh, realize that Black can do that as well. Which is pretty cool. If this gets stronger, then he cuts off one direction, that middle group can run. If White continues trying to attack the middle, well, kind of hard to kill it. And Black ensures a lot of the territory on the left is just completely destroyed. So White responds. He wants his territory. I mean, he needs more than just a hope to kill the center and a large corner in the bottom right, given that uh, this is a pretty sizable corner for Black, and the top hasn't been reduced yet. So we can't just give up these points. We can, but it would be a little bit of a gamble if we actually try that. Uh, questions... Can black even afford think about... Okay, that's a different thought. Uh, if white doesn't respond to attacks in the middle... I, yeah, I just mentioned that. You can try to do that, but you have to be so very careful. You cannot lose Sente, because if black actually saves himself on the middle, and you get to descend as black here, I think white might lose the game. It's kind of large. So, that move, very large, we, don't, we had to respond to it, because descending is Sente. Now we can go on the attack, and you can see the, the thought here. This is a group, this is a group. I'm cutting white off, just as white is trying, or just as black is trying to cut me off. So, I'm going to be the one trying to get in that uh, large move in the middle. Don't want to get cut through. Can't possibly afford to respond to this. Because we see what's going on. If we respond to this, we're going to get cut in the center. And then we've got two groups under attack. Nice splitting attack. That's... No, 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 no. That's game over. We do not want to do that at all. So we're backing off. Don't want to lose our stones, because we're going to respond. Then we're connecting up. Because if white got that move in, holy crap would we be in trouble. White gets to follow up. This is just free for him, because he ignored. And now something maybe only Frozen Soul would be able to see. White still wants to cut off these two stone, these two groups. I would be worried about my center as white now. Hmm. Okay. White's worried that he's not going to be able to kill something. So he decides to do something about that. Like try and cut black again. T-space extension, not exactly the most solid connection you can ever play. 
there is Aja there. So he's going to try and take advantage of it. White responds. Okay. Or black responded, sorry. White tries to get Sente because he wants to go and cut, but he needs to be made a little bit stronger for something that black isn't going to fall for. Center's very, very large. He's not messing around. But it allows white to continue his attack. A lot of really great games turn into that kind of thing there, uh, Mar. Er, Mar. Er. Yeah. So I'm black to try to connect. Yeah, white doesn't probably not gonna die anytime soon. Probably not. Cut through. Forget that, I'm taking territory. Threatens to cut, forget that. Take your stone, I don't care. And now we launch into some mid-game stuff. Or well we're herp derp, we've been in the mid-game for quite some time now. We're uh, launching into a few things I might go over a little bit quickly, because they're pretty obvious. I mean, he's uh, going to peep here. But white or black sides, that's not large enough, and I so agree with that. I mean, I'm actually kind of surprised that white didn't just go ahead and connect up and take his territory. So, I mean, even turning, it looks like these stones are might be in a bit of trouble because we can undercut them, and then the corner's still open, so... Bit, bit of an odd move here by white. But, push and cut, yeah, a little bit aggressive, or a little bit problematic. Can play here, so we have solid connection. We can go up, or we can go over. As long as we have those two, we are not going to die. So, let's see how much odd is in the corner. White moves aggressively to kill. Because this is huge. If he loses the territory here, I mean, that's just game over. Tries to live. White throws in, because he knows how to try to kill the corner. He has to throw in, otherwise it's just over. But now there's so many forcing moves here. Isidol is just practically cheaty with how many forcing moves he has and how he can so well use all this Aji. Because now these three stones have to freaking live. White is on his way to dying in a hole. Yes, Frozen Soul. So he has to save those stones. He can't let those go. But because he saved those, now he's going to try and connect. Okay, that was interesting. Can't let that happen, so we cut, but we've got liberties now. So we can go back and try and kill these four stones. A bit technical. White does, black doesn't connect. He instead he pokes at, uh... Nice little shape point. Might be able to revive some of his stones, that'd be kind of nice. White says you're dead, my stones are not going to have any problems, and connecting at E2 is not going to be sente for you ever. White says, or Black says fine, if I can't connect at E2 and sente, I'll just come out here now, and now what are you going to do? Plays the Atari, gets to connect because it's going to be sente, don't want to lose those stones. And later on, he gets to uh, save his two. So, didn't lose too much from that, I guess. It's probably not the great result he was hoping for. But, White's now forced to capture quite a lot of moves. So, it's something. I'm sorry. Uh, monkey jump for later. Um, 
careful with the monkey jump, because if you lose liberties and black gets to connect, you have to remember that he's still going to have, uh, black's still going to have liberties there if he connects at h2, so you have to make certain that you have more. He might be able to, you might be able to monkey jump, but read that out very, very carefully first. Alright, so white says no cutting me off, that's not nice. Black doesn't want cut off either. White connects because this is huge. Connects up solidly, no shenanigans. And then turns. Keeps as much of his corner as he can, or the bottom as he can. And now, once again, we're getting into... How much more of this game did I actually want to go over? I think I was actually just going to stop a long friggin' time ago, wasn't I? Yeah, I meant to do two games tonight. Apparently that's not going to happen. Huh. But... That's least little games for you. A lot of interesting things happen. I mean, that middle was the reason why I picked this. Um, as you know, if you've seen my lectures before, you kind of know that I kind of like these games where they're really walking on this really tight edge where one slow move and everything just comes crumbling down. And that's kind of what we saw because they were both attacking each other severely. Well, not really severely, but on a very large scale in the center. And we can see how they handled that. White does have a lot of territory. Mm, does have a lot of territory, that's true. Black's territory, though, that's not that bad either. Because you have to figure that this is third line territory. Okay, that is second. We've got some captured stones here. But how much is that really worth? I mean, is it really worth more than, let's say, uh, Black's area here that spans to the corner and then to the right side? As well as the top, because keep in mind this is like the main source of territory for uh, White now, the bottom left. With that turn at D11, the uh, territory here, not really certain how much he's going to get. Oh, I'm not going to try to clear all those. So, <clears throat> connects, connects on up. Keeps low, no more territory to be had there. Connecting up our stones. Not letting ourselves be captured. Strengthening our position. Let's see, is there much else I really wanted to go over? Uh, a lot of this is actually kind of small and what I would regard as rather uninteresting. So I think what I'm going to do instead of going out, uh, going over all of the rest of this game is I will instead post a link to where you can view the rest of this if you so wish. You can do so here to see who wins and how. And instead, I'm going to mention again, since we have more people here, what I'm going to do on my next lecture. That is, hopefully, as long as schedules permit, um, I think Frozen Soul and I will be playing a game, which you guys will be able to watch on my uh, streaming channel, in order to hear both of us comment on the game simultaneously, discuss uh, essentially, you know, why we're playing what we're playing, why we're avoiding certain other moves, that sort of thing. You guys will be allowed to ask questions throughout the game, because it's pretty much going to be a teaching game for you guys. Uh, yes. And you'll be able to direct questions either to myself or Frozen Soul, who in the chat, as you can see, is a 5-don. So... 
should be able to answer whatever you guys uh, are curious about. And I will be doing that week after next for my lecture. So you might want to be sure to uh, be around for that. I will also point out that we are down to one lecture left. And if you want to continue to donate to show your appreciation for either the lectures or the streams or the other videos that I have on my uh, YouTube channel, you can click the link there. And those watching later, you can simply PayPal to Akari at zoominternet.net. Lectures themselves are only uh, $20 per, and essentially it just keeps the rest of, rest of the things that I'm doing is free. You will find my Twitch out week after next. I will be giving it out the link before uh, the lecture. Those of you who do not know what it is yet, I will just pretend that there are enough of you that it's actually still secret. Because it was meant to be for a very long time. It was meant to be secret. Regardless of what you might think, I do not always like people watching me play. Or watching me in general, which is kind of weird and some people have pointed out it doesn't make any sense at all. But that's true. There you have it. I will warn you, though, if you... Well, some of the streams I upload to YouTube, I think they're really, really good. Uh, either the game-wise or just comment-wise. Others aren't very good, and those I'm a little bit self-conscious about. Either my commentary just absolutely was abysmal, and I missed, you know, everything that was going on in the game. Or maybe I was chatting with someone on Skype, and I might have died in glorious ways. So yeah, that's essentially why. But week after next, I will be giving out the link to everyone. It'll be in my channel, or my room, rather. It'll be in my info, and I will, of course, post it again before the game. So everyone will get to know what it is. That'll be fun. So until then, uh, I hope you all have a good uh, week. If you've got no questions, then I will see you then.